Let's start with number three. All they tell us is that there's this uh, this direct variation equation with two six as a solution. So they want us to find the equation, they want us to graph the line. So let's look at the graph real quick. We know that if a line has, or an equation has a 2, 6 as a solution, then 2, comma 6 is on that graph. We put in 2 for x, we get out 6 for y. Um, and then also remember what we said in the last, uh, the last video y equals a times x is the form of a direct variation equation, meaning, uh, without explicitly having said it, that the y-intercept is always 0. It's always plus 0. That's why we don't really have to write it. Uh, it's just always 0. So this being our slope, this being our y-intercept. So if we go back to the graph, um, we know we have this point at 2, 6. What other point would we have? Well, every direct variation equation has a y-intercept at 0. So we automatically get that point for free. Okay, there's your line. It goes through the point that was given and the, the y-intercept of 0. So how do we find the equation? Um, well, we don't know A. We need to find A. We need Y. The, the, at the end, it'll be Y equals the, an actual number times X, the variable X. And we don't know A, but we do know Y and X. We do know we have 6 equals A times 2. So to find A, we'll just divide both sides by 2. And A equals 3. So our equation is Y equals 3 times X. So whatever X is, multiply by 3, then you'll get Y. Okay, and that makes sense. We can see that uh, kind of intuitively from what we were given at the beginning. Okay. And let's do number 6. This is another quick example. It goes through 410. Okay, so we know that it goes to the point 410. So there we go. And all direct variation equations, or, or the lines of direct variations, uh, go through the origin. So there is our line, right through the origin and through the point that they gave us. We also know that it's of the form y equals a times x. And we know this 10 is y. We don't know a yet, but we do know that x is 4. So we'll divide both sides by 4, and a is going to be... 5 halves, so y equals 5 halves times x is our equation. Number 11. We know x equals 4 and y equals 8. Okay, so what it's telling us is that the, vari the variables x and y vary directly. Uh, they want us to write an equation that relates x and y and then find uh, y when x equals 12. So we, we basically have this point, 4, 8. They're telling us that x and y vary directly, which means that they can be um, plugged into a formula of this form, a direct variation formula. Uh, and that's pretty much all we need to know for the first part. Uh, it's just like before. x is 8, or y is 8, and x is 4. So a is going to be 2. So y equals 2x is our equation. So that's like the first part of the, the question. It then says, find y when x is equal to 12. So this is our equation. So if we want to plug in an x of 12, we'll get a y of 24. And so there's the second part of our equation. Here's our, our second part of our problem, problem number 11. Here's our equation, and here is y when x is 12. Let's do one more like that. x is equal to negative 18. y is equal to 4. Uh, so we know that y is 4, and that's equal to some number times x. x is negative 18. We'll divide by negative 18. 
And we'll get that a is equal to negative 2 over 9. So uh, y is equal to negative 2 over 9 times x. And now they tell us x is equal to 12. So y equals negative 2 ninths x, or 2 ninths times uh, 12. We can cancel out a little bit. This would be a 3. This would be a 4. So this would be negative 8 over 3. Okay. And there we go. That's 11 and 14. Number 18. Okay, so they give us the equation y equals negative 8x, and they say, is this direct variation? And if it is, give the constant of variation. So we're becoming very familiar with the idea that a direct variation equation looks like this y equals a times x. Uh, does this look like that? It does. y equals a times x. That's all there is, nothing more, nothing less. So it is direct variation check. What's the constant of variation? That's just a. And a in this case is negative 8. So a equals negative 8. That's the constant of variation. Okay, uh, Let's try 19. y minus 4 equals 3x. Maybe we should get it to be y equals. We're, we're used to that setup, y being on one side. So y equals 3x plus 4. Does this look like that? No, not exactly. It's got a little bit extra. It's got a plus 4. This would have a plus 0 there. So no, that's not a direct variation. And so there is no constant of variation, seeing as it's not a direct variation equation. Just need to match it up and see, does it look like y equals a times x? Okay, x and y vary directly, just like uh, a couple of uh, examples ago. Um, and they want us to find x now when y equals negative 4. So we know that x is negative 6 and y is 8. We know they vary directly, so we know that they fit into this form. So 8 equals a times negative 6. And a is equal to... Uh, negative 4 thirds when we divide by negative 6 on both sides. So y equals negative 4 thirds x is our equation. And now they want us to find x when y is something, when y is negative 4. So y is negative 4. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 4 thirds on both sides. Okay, we can think of this as negative 4 over 1, so this 4 could cancel with this 4. We get a negative 3 times a negative. This is a negative 1 now. So 3 equals x. So there's that. 28. x equals negative 20 over 3. And y equals negative 15 over 8. So negative 15 over 8 is equal to some number times x. We're about to find what that some number is. We'll multiply by negative 3 over 20. Okay, we can simplify this a little bit. This will be a 5. Uh, this will be a 3. And this will be a 4. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Over 8 times 4 is 32. Uh, oh, let's see. This is negative 3 times negative 3. This is a negative. So this should be a positive 9. Let me erase that negative. Okay. Uh, and on this side, they just cancel each other out. So a is 9 over 32. So y equals 9 over 32 times x. That is our equation. And now we're going to let y be negative 4 and solve for x. Multiply by 32 over 9. 
so that these cancel. This could, we could think of this as negative 4 over 1. So mm, negative 128 over 9, that's x. Right. Okay, here's a good question. 31. They give us this table with some x and y values. Here's x, here's y. These are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, so this takes a little bit of uh, thinking through. I like a problem that takes some thinking through. Uh, we weren't told exactly how to solve a problem like this, but they're asking does or do x and y vary directly? Okay, what does that mean? By definition, it means that they would be able to relate by this equation. So how could we determine whether these are related by direct variation or not? We know y and we know x, and we know that if they're going to vary directly, <clears throat> we need to be able to take x and multiply it by a number and get y, the same number. This a needs to be the same every time. So x times the same number needs to be y. That means x times some number should be equal to negative 1, and x or 6 times that same number should be equal to negative 2, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, what we could do is then see um, if we divide by x on both sides here, we have a way to find a. If this is direct variation, we should be able to find a by taking y and dividing by x. So uh, let's take y and divide it by x here. We'll get negative one third. Let's do that here. We'll get negative one third. Also here we get negative one third. You have to do it for every single one of them because it has to work every time, and it does. Yes, it does work. Is there any more information they want? They want an equation. So the equation is not difficult. We know it's y equals a times x, and a we just found several times over is negative one third. There we go. Um, see if we can squeeze in number 32 on this same screen. Okay, I saved you the, uh, the time of watching me write that out. Uh, so here's this table, and we know that x is 1 and y is 7 and, and so on. And this same process here, if these vary directly, then y divided by x should be a constant, should be the same every time. So we'll take y and divide it by x, we get 7. And when we take y and divide it by x, we get 9 over 2. That's not the same, and it's over. It is not direct variation. We've already found that out, since we didn't get the same number both times. Okay. And now we have a weather question. I thought I'd bring to you some original artwork. Okay. So this is number 39. Uh, so it's hailing. This is hail here. Um, and the, the wording of this problem is, is a little confusing. So let's work our way through it. Hail a half an inch deep. Uh, and weighing 1,800 pounds, covers a rooftop. So what they're saying is uh, there's, you can imagine a house. With the chimney there. Right. And there's this hail that covers the roof. All right, and this hail is half an inch deep. It's a half an inch. And it weighs 1,800 pounds altogether. All of this hail, it's, it's half an inch deep, and altogether it weighs 1,800 pounds. 
So I didn't understand that right away when I read this. Um, so the hail's weight, W, uh, varies directly with its depth, D. We want to write an equation that relates D and W. So when it says that its weight varies directly with, in that order, weight varies directly with its depth. Okay, so the thing that comes first is on this side, uh, we would say y varies directly with x, um, or w varies directly with d. As d changes, y changes. And, w or it's not, not, not y, w. As d changes, w changes, and w changes in it, the predictable way that we just take d and multiply it by a number, and that gives us w, okay? Uh, so what is that a there? Well, we'll have to find it. We do have a weight, 1,800. And we have a depth of 1 half. Let's just say 0.5. Uh, so how do we solve for A? We divide by 0.5 on both sides. Divide by 0.5. And A is equal to um, 36, 3600. Yes, that is right. So A is 3,600. So the equation that will give us the weight is W equals 3,600 times D. And they want us to predict the weight of a uh, hail on a roof if it is 1.75 inches deep. Um, okay. So if it's 1.75 inches deep, then we should be able to find the weight by using our equation that we just found. And that will be... Sixty-three hundred pounds. All right, that should do it. Thanks for watching.